welcome to a Parallel Project Training APM Project Management Qualification podcast based on the APM Body of Knowledge 6th edition. You should be using this in conjunction with our e-learning, study guide and potentially a tutor-led course. For more information, please visit www.parallelprojecttraining.com. Hello, welcome to this Parallel Project Training podcast. We're up to procurement with Paul Neighbour and John Bolton. Hello, John. Hello, Paul. Hello, you okay? Yeah, I'm good, yeah, yeah. Good, good. So we're, <clears throat> we're looking at procurement um, and the uh, assessment criteria. I explain the purpose and contents of a procurement strategy. Yeah. And distinguish between the different methods of supplier reimbursement. Yeah. Oh, that one's quite easy. And distinguish between different contractual relationships yep. and explain the supplier procurement selection process. Yeah. I think this is most people I find are quite good at this except they have to be in the right area mm-hmm. they have to answer the right question yes so when it's asked for a procurement strategy they need to talk about the strategy and when it talks about process they need to talk about the yeah, process right. i mean supply selection process is part of a procurement strategy yes correct. just you know bed that in your brain <laughs> let's start at the beginning let's do the procurement strategy why do you want a procurement strategy what is it what is it yes it is, it's a strategy for how you can do procurement Yes, it's part of the PMP. <laughs> or the business case. Or the business. It sits between Supports the two. It's a bit of yes, a bridge between the two. Yes, yeah, yeah. yes, that's right. Yeah. And it's a, it's a document we write early on in the project. That's right. Sets out how we're going to procure the goods and services right. that we need for for execution of the project. Quite a lot of industries have um, procurement strategies and project execution plans. Do they? And a PEP is slightly different from a, excuse me, PEP is slightly different from a PMP. Because the PEP just describes how you're going to manage the contract. Okay. Whereas a PMP describes how you're going to deliver all the stuff. All the work. Yeah, some of which might be a contract. So you might get get a contract that's purely outsourced, but you're the client managing them. Yes. Or you might have a PMP where you are managing other people to deliver stuff, some of whom might be your people, some of whom might be suppliers. So So what would be the typical contents of a strategy? um, Make or buy decisions, the first one. So are we going to make this in house or are we, we going, going to buy it? it? Yes. And it really that that drives whether you need a procurement strategy or not. <laughs> yes, because we're making it in house. Well, well, stop. Did, we are going to make this. Yeah, in-house. yeah. If, you, if you're going to make it in house, then you need your project management plan needs to describe how you're going to make it. Yes. If you're going to buy it, then your procurement strategy becomes the process of buying it. You know yes. what I mean? So it's a fundamental kind of decision at the start. So the first bit in the procurement strategy would um, discussion about make or buy. Mm-hmm. Uh, assume we're going to buy. Mm-hmm. Parts. Mm-hmm. Uh, what would, what else would be in a procurement strategy? Contractual relationships. So, are we going to prime contract? Are we going to subcontract? Are we have we're going okay. to have parallel contracts? Are we going to have different okay. kind of contract so what, types? What procurement route? People might call it a procurement route. Yeah, that's right. Our route there. to market. Yep, yep. And then reimbursement methods. So, how are we going to? How, what's our preferred payment style? Are we going to do dastain cost, time, materials, fixed price? Now, in some contracts, you might have all of those. No. So you might ask a, pl- a supplier oh, to yes. give you yes, that's right. a, 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 a quotation that includes some right. fixed price elements yeah, and some time right. materials elements. You, yeah, if you have a fixed price, you generally have any changes on time materials. Yes, that's right. So, that's right. Yeah, that's, that's why right. they're quite a, can be a bit dangerous. But yeah, so you, right. you have you might have things like cost plus or target cost or yes. all that sort of thing. Yes. So, and then uh, you, within the supplier selection, uh, sorry, the the um, procurement strategy of a supplier selection process, which has got another set of steps in it. Okay, right, which and, is and that's all about issuing the IT invitation to go out. get a shortlisting, assessing the returns, determining whether you think they can do it or not. The selection the selection criteria. criteria, awarding the contract. So it sounds like acceptance. quite a big document. This what's the what procurement strategy? Yeah, could be. Well, it could be. Yeah, could be. Yeah, it could be. I mean, if you're if you're if you're procuring an oil rig, <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, and you're, but but I mean. It's it's like Russian dolls, isn't it? You know, because you, you you would have supply selection operating at different levels, and procurement operating at different levels. Yeah, because your are contractors those. might be procuring in their own right, and their subcontractors might be procuring in their own right. So they might all have their own versions of this document. So I think at, at the highest level, that make or buy decision really is quite f- crucial to get. You know, and we should put a health warning here because there are down. quite strict leg- regulatory legislative requirements for. Um, government and utility so most organizations have a procurement specialist who mm. will make sure that you follow the rules because mm. you right. can end up losing yourself a lot of money if you 
don't follow the rules properly. That's right. And then you get, at the end of it all, you get some um, contract admin in your supplies, any procurement strategy. So it'll say how we're going to administer the That's right. contract. That's right. So checking up meetings, reports, rights of inspection, all uh, that sort of thing. So how's that different from a process then? What? A strategy. How's the strategy different from the process? It's an approach. It's not a linear it's not a linear thing, is it? A make or buy decision is not, not, not something you repeat over and over again. Yes. It's a linear... So when we say explain the supplier selection process... Oh, sorry, you're talking... I was talking, I was talking about procurement strategy. Yes. A supplier selection process. We yes. might do how's it. that different from that? You might do it frequently, might you? Yes, but what would be the stages in the supplier selection process? Define the requirement, issue a tender, answer the queries, appoint the supplier. Okay. That's supplier selection, isn't it? Yes. Okay, um, and procurement strategy simply lays the framework of how you would do that. Yes, okay. So it will say you've got to go to three suppliers. It will say that you have to take the cheapest. It will say that you have to f- do these checks to make sure they're financially stable. It will it will say that this is how you administer the contract when you've got it. It will say... So we can draw an analogy between risk management again, can't we? That's right. Because yeah. the project management plan defines how you're going right. to um, follow the process. That's and right. um, and uh, the process itself sets out the sort of stages that you go I mean, through. it goes without saying that if you're not procuring anything, you don't need one. <laughs> yes, that's true. <laughs> but it's, it's very rare to not procure something. Yes. You always need it materials or something. a computer or something yes. like that. Good, I'm clear about that now. Whether you want to bother about it or not is... And then know. the other one is distinguishing different methods of supplier reimbursement. I think we've touched on that. We've touched on that. I mean, you're talking about reimbursement methods of firm, firm price, fixed price, time materials... Cost plus. Cost plus. Target yeah. price. Yeah, that's right. And the only one that people ever really haven't met, maybe sometimes, is target price. Target price, yeah. Where you have a, a target and you get paid a, a bonus. Mm. A pain share, gain share. Yeah. Basically. I think a lot of construction is sort of emerging cost. Yes, I think you know, it is. You, 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 take, you take a tender based on a bill of quantities, a bill of materials. There's loads of preliminaries and provisionals in there. You take all those out and then you're left with the core product. Unit but product. you only find out what the price is when they actually buy well, it. Yes. And then, of course, the contractor's trying to get the cheapest possible deal they can. If it's if it's um, if it's firm price, if it's emerging costs, then you're only going to pay them what they cost plus their fees. And of course, the motivation for them is to not drive the price down because their fee reduces. <laughs> yes, yeah. So, a, a lot of these pricing methods are there really to drive incentives, and and they incentive di- incentivize different groups differently depending on their nature. You know? Yeah. And then contractual relationships. Are different from reimbursement methods. Contractual relationships would be firm, uh, would be uh, prime. That's right. Prime is the most prime is the most common where you have a prime contract. That's right. Single supplier where you go to a single source. That's right. I struggle to think of a situation where you go to a single supplier. A single supplier, or if it's something simple. Okay. I mean, if you're just buying a new piece of hardware, you just bought a Bluetooth adapter for your phone. That's a single supplier. No, it isn't. I bought that off Amazon, and they bought it off Logitech, and they bought that off. No, you no, you bought it off Amazon. Yes. Your relationship was with Amazon. Yes. That's not an advert. By How's the way. that different from a prime contractor then? Well, a prime contract is integrating multiple services. Uh huh. So you engage one prime contractor, you're paying them for their integration and project management. Yes. And they are actively managing the other two subcontractors on your behalf. Yes. So I might appoint a large contractor to build a house yes and they'll be worried about when the electricians there when the plasters are there when yes. the bricklayers are there yes if i'm going to kick a backside it's going to be the prime contractor not the electrician yes exactly right so um i suppose in, in your amazon example i mean it's, it's a poor example but i mean <laughs> you know they've they've got they've got one supplier who's supplying to them and they're supplying to you it's yes. just it's just supply chain yes in yes. the same way that your subcontract your plaster will be buying you know plaster from plaster from wicks or you know travis perkins or somewhere and travis perkins will have bought it from someone else british gypsum and british gypsum oh. would have bought it from somebody else so i mean that's just supply chain but the, here you're talking about prime contractors integrating the delivery. If so you spe- so spe- if you go to so if you go to your hi fi shop and you say I want to buy a new hi fi and they sell you four pieces of hi fi equipment, you know, yes, and they're kind of taking responsibility for the fact it's a good choice. Yes. And if it doesn't all work nicely, you'll go back and moan at them. Yes. You won't go and moan at Sony or that's Denon right. or someone. That's right. That's right. And that's that's like a prime contractor. So I think a prime contractor that you, you're right there. The 
the difference is it's the integration of different organisations to deliver the yeah. the work. Yeah. And Whereas the, a single single supplier, you're you're just going manage to one them directly. organisation. That's right. And they have all the resources in house. That's right. And, and prime contracts cost a lot of money, or well, well, can cost a lot of money because the prime paying, contract has taken a risk. Yes. You're paying. Yeah. And then parallel and sequential was just simply two different variations on a theme. Really, parallel contracts are where you have got two contractors working on site together. So you've got someone like plasterers and electricians and you're integrating them. So you're making sure they don't trip over each yeah, other. Yes. Or you can have parallel contracts where you've got two separate contractors both delivering the same specification but on different sites. So quite often housing estates have more than one Framework contractor. contractors are yeah, quite often called. Yeah. And, and so you And you, and you do them. that to try and spread the risk. So if, if one is can't yeah, can't finish it you can use the other one yes. and you can play one off against the other yes. and all that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. and then sequential contracts really the difference there is you've got two contractors but one's relying on the output of the other so yes. like a design and build like an architect yeah. an architect does the design and then that's the right. builder does the build that's right and the question is am i am i engaging them separately in which case i'm carrying the can if i can't build it <laughs> mm-hmm. or is the contractor you know is the is the mm-hmm. architect responsible mm-hmm. for the buildability mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. that's why you get design and build contracts and you know that sort of thing mm. Good. That's it, really. That's it. Job done. So what was the last one? It's oh, really. Oh, um, yeah. What was the last one? No, done all those. Done all right. I find this is people do quite well in this area, but they have to just read the question carefully because if it says describe the supplier selection process, make sure you describe the process. If it says describe the strategy, make sure you describe the strategy. If it says supplier reimbursement mm. reference, make sure you talk about payment. Yeah types and if you say different types of contract relationship make yeah. sure you talk about yeah because people single. talk about fixed price contracts you see yes. and really that's a bit of a misnomer well most contracts have fixed price elements and time and materials elements in them that's right so the two are different so, concepts yes the reimbursement methods are different from the, con- the type of contract and i mean you also some people have come across things like jct contracts and nec contracts and i think it's valid to talk about those as a, yes. a potential contract type as a group but you talk about them as being industry specific, and that's right. And usually, I think that's why the APM have gone towards this sort of um, sequential, slightly power generic and model. Prime, yeah, because JTC. If you start talking about JTC or traditional contracts yes. or design and build yes, contracts, the IT people are going to go, oh, what, the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> "What the hell?" Mr. Neighbour swore then, didn't you? <laughs> what the hell is this all about? You know. <laughs> so yes. uh, I think that does cause a little bit of confusion. Some people go, "Oh, oh sort of, uh, yeah." But I think it'd be if you're making five points in your answer, talking about five different oh, we contract types. Oh, forgot our turnkey contract. Oh, go the on. fifth one that we added. Fifth one. Yes. Well, a turnkey contract is where you pay. You you you. Um, my understanding of a turnkey contract is we have an output-based specification. That's right. And you say, I just want um, 50 megawatts delivered into the into the power grid. You decide how it's going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> and I'll just pay you on delivery of that. That's right. And so you see quite a lot of service contracts like that these days. You know, I just want to manage this prison or I want to manage this. Yes, okay. Well, these pay. waiting lists or something, you know, That's and I'll right. just pay you so much per, per prisoner. Per prisoner or, yeah. Yes, yeah. whatever. Go and drum up some business. <laughs> Go and grow your business. <laughs> yeah. I always yeah. used to like the concept of customer satisfaction in, in prisons. You know? <laughs> yes. Yeah, it's like Sainsbury's, you know. So you pay not, for... Well, not Sainsbury's like a prison, but if you, you know, if you ask someone if they don't want to, if they don't really want to be there, they're not going to be very happy, so regardless paid, of how yes. nice it is. So you paid for the outcome. Yeah. You paid for the outcome. That's right, yeah. You yeah. paid for the efficiency, not for the output. You pay for the result. Yes. Rather than the products. Yeah, pay for buy results. Fantastic. Brilliant. Mm. That was really good. No worries. We hope you enjoyed this podcast and found it informative. To order a study guide, e-learning, or a tutor-led course to go with this podcast, please visit www.parallelprojectstraining.com.